printed five and got like 20 back. Next week, I printed like 20, uh, which was last week, we had about 30 or so. Mm -hmm. um, I wish you guys would just commit to come and be here. <laughs> You're growing in popularity. <laughs> yes. So, today, in the entire words of Jesus, when we're anxious and we're fearful, um, what are some common fears? Oh, I got that. Let me turn this on. What are some common fears that people experience today? What are some common fears? Speaking in public. Snakes. Snakes. Spiders. Spiders. Spouse. Spider refs. Boogeyman. Boogeyman. What? Death. Death. Yeah, not enough money. Say again. Finances. We studied in class Wednesday night locally. Loneliness. Bonset preacher. No, you said that. <laughs> 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 you know, said <laughs> so you fear the preacher. <laughs> yeah, he might talk to you and tell you to do something you need to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> Fight your neighbor. <laughs> so making it. <laughs> boat sinking? Boat, boat sinking. sinking. Boat sinking. 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 We don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know he talks about it all the time. That was a sad day. <laughs> still, still working something out. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> Got to get it ready for this summer. Oh. Got the boat guy coming this week. Yeah. Anyway, so making it more personal, what things do you find yourself worried about the most? It, you know, don't, don't, don't. For a lot of folks, it's health issues. Health? Kids. Worry about kids, fearful, anxious. Other things that you find yourself worried about? Direction of the country. Finances. Being an example. Finances. Finances. So, a number of things. Fear is a common experience of humanity. Uh, we fear everything from death, as we said, to speaking in front of a group. Uh, you know, we all have different gifts. Didn't the preacher say that this morning? Yeah. <laughs> I told y'all before, my dad would never have been a preacher, but he did all kinds of other stuff in church. He feared, he did not want to speak in front of a group of people. And uh, uh, he passed away about 32 years ago, really before, I, uh, right at the time I was starting my ministry. He never, he probably rolled it over in his grave that I could get up and preach, but he could never do that. We just have different gifts. So the, the fear of speaking, for me, is it's great. Because I figure, you know, if I jack it up, you know, my wife will let me know. And I'll try to unjack it the following week. But really not one of my biggest fears. I have other fears. But speaking is not necessarily one of them. Uh, some psychologists postulate the fear is a strong motivating force behind most everything we do. I have a friend of mine. Many, many years ago, well, we grew up on church together, but his biggest fear was poverty. Poverty. And raised in a middle class home and all, never had experienced poverty growing up. But for some reason, that was his fear. <clears throat> and I don't know if it is. I haven't talked to him in a number of years. Uh, but uh, he's written a book and has, has uh, done a lot of other things and, and is quite wealthy. And I wonder now. You know, does he still have that fear? Does he feel like, you know, poverty is probably not in his picture? They say many of our decisions and most of our accomplishments may arise out of basic fear um, or fear of, uh, of basic fear of rejection or of failure. And many of us might have had that fear <laughs> of failure or rejection. You know, if you fear that failure, probably won't do a whole lot. Well, if I go to college, I'll just fail anyway. <clears throat> My parents told me 
early on, uh, well, when I was in high school, that, uh, you know, they were kind and good parents, but they said, Gary, you're not college material. And I've told y'all this before, and I, and I wasn't at that time. You know, I was interested in sports and girls, uh, not in that order, but uh, I had other things. To, I, I, I got through high school. I actually did pretty good in high school, and but I just wasn't that interested in school. <clears throat> And I was talked into taking one college class when I was in the Air Force, and I did. And it wasn't so bad, and I did very well in it, so I took another one. And then one thing led to another, and, and all but my fear was that, you know, I did have a certain fear of failure there, especially with my parents saying I want college material. Um, that kind of struck home with me. That don't beat up on my mom and dad for that, because I agree with them. At that point in my life, I was not college material. So... It can, it can cause us to not do anything because, well, I'll just be rejected or I'll just fail. I'll just, you know, they, they, they look at the worst case scenario and they don't do anything. Life is basically unpredictable and uncontrollable. Worry and fear of the future will be common experiences that all of us will share. We will have that. Since fear and anxiety were something that his audiences were familiar with, Jesus talked about both. Matthew 6, 25, he said, you don't worry about your life. Jesus said that. We believe it. Class is over. <laughs> Just go with that. Why is it we can read the word of God and we believe God and we believe in the scriptures, we believe this was inspired, but we don't have well, sometimes, I mean, the Bible clearly says, don't worry about your life. She said, don't worry about it. Well, why do we do it anyway? Because we're human. Which is kind of funny that way. And I try in my own life, you know, don't, don't worry about this, don't worry about that. It's in God's hands. Man, I want it back in my hands so I can do something with it. More than once, he said, do not be afraid. And even today, Jesus still speaks empowering <clears throat> words to us. So, human fear. A number of circumstances may arise which can cause us to be anxious and fearful. A lot of these we already have mentioned. Recent study of Forbes magazine recounts the most common human fears. First one, public speaking. So, I was reading another When I got my counseling degree, we were discussing these different things. They don't think on fear so well. And public speaking is typically at number one in whatever survey you see. Whereas the death of your spouse is like three, four, five down. <laughs> or lower. Uh, I mean, is, is, is that almost like saying I'd, I'd rather my spouse die than have to speak in front of crippled people? <laughs> I have a nice hope of a little humor there. Mm -hmm. We'll press on. <laughs> <laughs> Crowds? Is that what we call it? Isn't that agoraphobia? You know what that one is? That's indoors. That's it's afraid to leave the house. Yeah, yeah. staying indoors. Is... Sometimes when you've been to war, uh, PTSD type stuff, uh, crowds, people. Uh, you, you become anxious, uh, especially being around those. With fear crowds, uh, just we're, we're afraid something bad might happen. Tunnels and bridges. Tunnels and bridges. Uh, some people do not like Midbay Bridge at all. I get behind a lot of them. <laughs> get behind a lot of them. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> You know, when I'm going over, I mean, the worst fear is a section giving way, and all of a sudden I end up the drain. And so when I go over it, I usually put windows down, that way I can swim out. <laughs> That's especially bad when it's poor rain. Cool. I don't really do that. I'm kidding. There was, a, when we lived in Colorado, I forgot what the tunnel was, like something like Eisenhower Tunnel or whatever, that we would go up to uh, different places, Breckenridge. I think go there. there was this long tunnel through a mountain. I oh, loved yeah. it. But this person that I'm closely associated with 
Um, did not like that tunnel whatsoever. So we'd be going through it, snow and all coming down, and then you're good, you know, going through this tunnel, and then snow coming down again. It was great. Closed spaces. So elevators. Elevators. Oh, yeah. MRIs. <laughs> MRIs. Yeah. I had my first one mention this. I had my first MRI. They said, Do you need something to relax you? I said, No, I'm good. I told y'all about this. I got in the thing, they put me in there, and I was fine. And I opened my eyes. And then I started thinking, wow, I guess this is what it's like being buried alive. Oh and I God. said, well, that's not something good to think about. <laughs> <laughs> so some of us, Mike, did you go through survival school? Anybody else go through the airport? Jim, Jim, you went through it. You went through it. Rob, you went through it. I went through it. I had four children. <laughs> Thankfully, though, you had a son in law come through who saved the day. <laughs> oh, whoa. Wow. <laughs> that was it. So those of you who went through survival school, you remember resistance training in a closed space? They put you in. Yeah, I was never claustrophobic until the Air Force made me claustrophobic. <laughs> and they put you in a box. Why? It was uh, resistance training. If we were able to take it in prisoner of war, Okay. And things that might happen. Okay. Is that yeah. So, yeah, I, I, I do not, uh, I, I don't care to go back through survival school. Water survival was fun, but that was not so much uh, of a good time. But yeah, the Air Force made me claustrophobic. Uh, storms, uh, we fear storms because we have a little control over them. Sometimes they will sink a boat. <laughs> public transportation. Uh, since 9-11, people especially feel crowded on public, in public transportation. I, uh, I mean, around here, we probably don't use them. But we really don't. Do we even have less lines or city yes, buses? We do. Yes, we do. We have a couple different okay. lines. But not bus lines. But, yeah. We have Greyhound stuff. Shuttle. Yeah, we have shuttles. shuttles. We have shuttles. Shuttle. There, oh. Oh, that's also a door for me. Shadows go to the beach. <laughs> water. My granny used to say, do not go in water till you know how to swim. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, hives. You know, that one is, is funny. Because I didn't, never really had a fear of heights, but the older I get, you know, it's it's the weirdest thing. Those ladders, they don't make them like they used to. They used to, they're strong and sturdy, and now they just wobble all over the place. Yeah. Okay, and then we had mentioned bugs, mice, snakes, and bats, spiders. Yeah. Fear of everything. <laughs> and so besides these common fears, we also have added anxieties of daily life. We fear rejection. Who likes being rejected? No one. Uh, we fear for the safety of our family. We fear making the wrong decisions. What often happens with this one is, is don't make a decision. It's oftentimes worse. We experience fears related to our health. Fear of failure is always there. Fear of the future. And we fear death. You know, 
we all have, and we all we also have our own personal fears. There are certain fears that, that I have that none of you know anything about. None of you. None of you. Uh, and you probably have some that you haven't told anyone about. So, but one that, that I can share with you, you know, when, when I get a lesson prepared, and understand when I'm working on Sunday lesson, there's nothing new under, a sun, under the sun, okay? Somebody mentioned, well, Jesus' sermons were original. And I, if you look, he also quoted some from the Old Testament. I get sermons in a lot of different places. Uh, friends of mine, we share sermons. We uh, uh, have a subscription service to different sermon thoughts and outlines and, and other things. And um, all times I'll look at them. Anyway, the, the final product that gets delivered comes from many different uh, resources. Some is original, to be honest with you, or some is just. Um, you know, I don't say none of it comes from me. That is not true. It does, but it comes from, I have sermon books, I have commentaries. I mean, it comes from a lot of different areas. If a preacher ever tells you everything he does is original, he's a liar. I don't believe anyone has everything original. Getting to my point, my fear is, I, when I have a lesson ready and I present it, my fear is that people won't get something out of it. I want people to get something out of all of my lessons, whether, whether it's Bible class or preaching. I want them to have something that they can take with them and use it in their lives and to grow closer to God and, and to be a better person and to just grow just grow. So, yeah, that's one of my fears, is that I preach a sermon and no one gets anything out of it. Now, no that one only happens if nobody can hear what you preach. That's good. Mm -hmm. Right, Debbie. If no one can hear it? Wait, are you blaming me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're saying you can hear, hear it. it. <laughs> well, especially in preaching, it's such a wide audience. Those who know so much about the Bible and those who know very little. Those new Christians, those who have been Christians forever. You know, and I want to be able to provide everyone with something. And so I I have that fear. Nobody has ever stopped me in the back coming through and said, Preacher, you know, I got absolutely nothing out of your sermon. <laughs> I would Hopefully they do, I guess. Because if they didn't care, man, that's a whole different problem. If I didn't care, I don't care if I get anything out of it. What kind of attitude is that? Probably wouldn't have a very good sermon. Well, probably won't preach very long for very many years. Yeah. So, Todd, do you, did you ever have that fear, or did you? My biggest fear was. And during the service, I would I would roam up and down. I went to the car. I went to the office. I never couldn't find him anywhere. Walked back in. And he was right from communion. He was sitting there just giggling. Your notes are underneath the, the book. So here's the thing. I don't trust people. So <laughs> <laughs> if anyone ever did that to me, and I couldn't find him. That's okay. I got a back pocket sermon. I'm going to go with it. And I, I probably know my notes well enough. I can just get up there and do it and go off the slides. But uh, so, yeah, there was a, uh, this was actual true story. A guy was uh, guest preaching in a friend of his church where that other guy was a preacher. And so the guy uh, got up to introduce his friend who was going to preach that Sunday. Before he got up there, the guy had left his notes down there on the front pew. And so he looked, went through, saw his three main points. We got up there and he introduced the guy and he said, you know, 
I can remember hearing Bob preach, and I remember so well. I remember his three points that he had. Oh. <laughs> and for the next 10 minutes, he preached that guy. <laughs> never trust a preacher. <laughs> I have friends in my seminary with it. Yeah, if I ever had a guest preach, <laughs> oh, I'd do something like that in a heartbeat. <laughs> That's ugly. I wouldn't do that. So, in his book, Encouragement, uh, the, the key to caring, Christian psychologist Larry Krabs, some of you have heard of him, has some of his books, asserts that fear is the most common of human emotions. He says the underlying force of much of what we do and experience, we fear will be seen as inadequate by others, so we hide behind masks. We fear rejection, so we avoid in-depth relationships and personal commitment. You know, if you don't have those close relationships, you don't have to worry much about rejection, right? Fear will not measure up to the assigned task before us, and so we avoid responsibility. We fear criticism of others, so we cover our backs and become defensive in our words. And also, if we fear criticism, we just don't do anything. We fear we'll be exposed as much less than what we try to portray ourselves to be, so we become self-promoting and very image conscious. We fear the judgment of God, so we convince ourselves of our own righteousness or neurotically pursue a salvation by works. Yeah, before the arrival of sin, the life of humanity, man and woman had no reason to be afraid. Adam and Eve were on friendly, open terms with God. They faced life with confidence and security. But with the arrival of sin, everything changed, and humanity began... Humanity begins to live with anxiety and fear. Genesis 3.10, remember Adam and Eve hide from God because they were afraid. And then Genesis 3.16-19, they, 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 they now confront a future of pain and uncertainty in which life will become difficult and very unpredictable. So we know the reality of the world is uncertainty and filled with periodic fear. Though fear can sometimes compel us toward courage or accomplishment, more often leads to problems and difficulties. You ever had such fear that your heart just starts racing, sweating? Fear and anxiety can produce muscle tension, migraine headaches, sleep disorders, you find it harder to concentrate, have problems in relationships. Um, but maybe the most negative consequence of fear is immobilization. As I said, we fear any decision we make, so we end up doing nothing. Nothing changes, so everything remains the same, and we continue to be fearful. And if you remember the one talent man in Matthew 25, 24, and 25, it was fear that immobilized him. He said, ah, I just hold on to this talent. Fear can mobilize you. <clears throat> Jesus responded to this reality. When he calmed the storm of Sea of Galilee, he rebuked the disciples because they were overcome by fear. Matthew 4, verse 40, why are you so afraid? You still have, you still have no faith. Jesus not only scolds them, but comments about their lack of faith. Here's Jesus again saying, don't, don't worry, don't be afraid. Why are you afraid? I mean, here's this Sea of Galilee raging. Do you not have any faith? I, I can relate to these guys, <laughs> these disciples. You've been on the water when it's getting really rough. Yeah, but you didn't have Jesus in your boat. I love Deborah so much. Happened twice. 
You could think after this first time it wouldn't have happened again, but it did. Amen. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Which so, means it happens to us. It, it does. <laughs> There's a reason for these stories. And part of it, these stories is don't be so hard on yourself. Even these people struggle. So he instructs his followers to not fear those who can harm the body, but fear evil which can harm the soul. So being in war zones, you know, that is, uh, there's a certain amount of fear that goes on there. Especially if you're being uh, mortared every single day, it, uh, it, war is very loud. It is very loud. You have generators running because you don't just hook up to Iraq power and light. And so you have generators running and then you have jets taking off. Um, you have your own mortars. You, uh, you have jets taking off that are doing what they call max climbs where, you know, they don't want to get shot at, so they go straight up. They have afterburners going. Your whole place is shaking. And then you have an Air Force that says, hey, let's build our living quarters by the flight line. <laughs> so it's all shaking. You have EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal, setting off rounds that they have confiscated, found, or even some that they have set off that get old, that are going boom. Then you have the bad guys shooting mortars into your camp. It's called indirect fire. They're just trying to hit something. They just fire it over the wall and it lands somewhere. Sometimes people die. So you get there and all this is going on and you gotta get some sleep. And that is one time where there was a certain fear that was there, but finally, in my case, other guys who've been in war zones can maybe have different stories I'd go sleep at night. I would put earplugs in and just figure, you know, if I die, I die. I mean, what are you going to do? There's nothing you can I got to get some rest. You put the earplugs in, put them in good deep so you don't hear all this stuff, and you go to sleep. And and I just, I, I figured if I die, the good Lord's going to take me on home and. And somebody will go tell Rhonda, and then all you folks are going to be over at the house after my funeral eating fried chicken and take some. <laughs> so I was good with it. So, several times Jesus says, don't be afraid. He told Simon Peter, if you miraculous catch a fish, Luke 5, verse 10, to Jairus, he learned his daughter was dead. Verse 536. To the disciples, when Jesus walked on the water, Matthew 14, 27. To Peter, James, and John at the Transfiguration, Matthew 17, 7. And uh, to the women announcing his resurrection, Matthew 28, 10. He had to say, don't be afraid a lot. There's about, if you Google that, I printed that out for last month, and there are over four pages do not fear, do not be afraid, be strong. Is that just <coughs> Jesus or is that cumulative? No, to the whole Bible. Where the angels would come and say that or God would say that. <coughs> yes. And think about Moses, Abraham, Joshua, yes. all of that. And the angels of Jesus, all, all, all of them where it is said, don't be afraid. Yes, it, that is true. <coughs> so Jesus speaks empowering words. Take courage and desire, don't be afraid. We'll look at a couple of these, Matthew 14, 27. Uh, walks on the water. Jesus has been speaking to the crowd. He dismisses them. Go to the other side of Sea of Galilee. And then he goes by himself into the mountains to pray. As night comes, the boats move quite a ways from shore. It's being tossed by the winds and the waves. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Three in the morning, Jesus approaches the boat, carrying disciples. He's walking on the water. Disciples think it's a ghost. They cry out in fright. He says, take courage. It is I do not be afraid. Upon seeing this miracle, Peter asked permission to go out to Jesus. Walked on the lake himself. And he notices the hazardous conditions. And... Fear takes hold, and he starts to sink. 
Jesus rescued Peter there. Y'all know the story. And then rebukes him, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Telling Peter that. Jesus climbs in the boat, wind dies down, waves become calm. They worship Jesus. They say, truly you are the Son of God. 14, chapter 14, verse 33. When we're filled with fright, fear today, Jesus speaks the same words. Take courage, I'm here. <clears throat> Even when we're mobilized by fear, remember the word of God. I'm still here with you. No reason to be afraid. He says, peace I leave uh, with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you or give to you as the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't be afraid. This was spoken by Jesus just before his betrayal. And as he prepares him for his leaving, he articulates something about new kind of life. He's, uh, new kind of life he offers. Uh, life without fear. The world offers peace based on the management of circumstances and presents its own suggestions. So, where are we going with this then? Some people say fear is conquered through prosperity. If I can only make enough money, I can only do this or do that. If I can only get that newer boat, then it won't sink. <laughs> it won't sink. If only I could make this much money a year. If only I could do this or that, or if I, I could, you know, get to a point have a pension or whatever. If only I could do that. So prosperity is the goal, and most people believe that. Economic affluence has the power to relieve fear and anxiety. A lot of people have that thought. Yeah, Jesus said, trust material wealth only increases in security for earthly treasures are fundamentally uncertain and unreliable. That's from Matthew 6, 19 through 21. Um, and even if economic prosperity does have the power to diminish financial Anxiety, it has no influence at all in limiting other fears, like safety for our children, fears related to how overwhelming fear of death, whatever it might be. Fear is conquered through avoidance. We will just simply avoid those situations that make us fearful. That's not all bad. As, as many of you know, yes, I have some PTSD, and part of that is from loud noises, um, mortars and rockets, booms. So I don't go to firework shows. For me, I just stay away from that type of stuff. Now, I could go. I, I could go. Uh, it makes me anxious hearing loud booms. And um, a therapist I went to said, you know, we can do this one of two ways. You can either avoid those things or what we can do, and it, you probably heard it was kind of step down where desensitization, exactly right. Thanks, Luke. To where, you know, you get used to a few booms, lower booms, you get bigger booms, something like that. And to where, I didn't work with spiders. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was just basically desensitization. And I said, how long will that take? He said, well, it'll take months. I said, no. Nah. I see no reason to go to any fireworks shows. I'm okay. I'm good. And, uh, and so I, I just avoid those. Now, that's not the avoidance. That's, that's not the, something so important. Um, it's not something I have to go to. We live in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Uh, the mayor would come before different things, and I got to know the mayor. You might say, wow, that's neat. Well, mayor of Cheyenne, I mean, Cheyenne's like 40, 50,000 people. Uh, it's the state capital. It's the least populated state capital in the whole nation. But we have an Air Force base there. 
we're stationary. I got to know him from going to different things. And he would come out to the different celebrations that we'd have for the July or whatever it might be, New Year's. But he always leave before the fireworks. He had been in Vietnam. And he, he just didn't like being around that. That's, that's not a bad avoidance. But, you know, I mean, and, and, and speaking in front of people, if that is your fear, then okay, avoid speaking in front of a group of people. Sometimes you might have to do that, though, at some point. Um, we, we, you might overcome your, uh, or conquer your fear of flying by not flying. But some things can't be avoided uh, in life, and so we have to deal with them uh, in other ways. And Jesus says, don't fear these things. And it's not like I feel like I'm in a war zone if I'm hearing fireworks, but there's something that just says, you need to get to a place of safety. It's just like an innate thing. You need to get to a place of safety. Don't, don't scare me. Don't startle me. Don't try to jump out or whatever. Rhonda walked up on me last night and scared me to death. Uh, she said, what? I said, nothing. Did I scare you? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot I was in the house. I turned around and there she was. It was she didn't do it on purpose, but it was just startling. Um, fear is conquered through self-indulgence is what one way the world's way of dealing with fear. So give in to our personal cravings and desires. Um, mask our fear. Fear is conquered through personal control. Most of us believe we just exert, maintain control over our lives and circumstances and our fears will dissipate. We assume with proper planning, research, and effort that life will not get out of control and there'll be no reason to fear. We try to control things as much as we can, but this is life. This is life. Yes. You know, one of the things that I, I think I fear most is lies. Is what? Lies. Lies of liars. Because of the damage that can be done by a lie is so uh, devastating. And a lot of times it's very hard to, to fix that once it's been propagated. You know, and I think it's gotten even worse lately because of. Uh, of the legalization of propaganda. And so I, it's just all around you now. It's just, you know, everything you hear, you're not really sure if that's true or not. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's true. <laughs> okay. That can, that kind of fear can paralyze you. It, it, it can. You can decide to put earplugs in. And Sleep. That is true. Well, let's finish it up. Jesus speaks when we're anxious and fearful. Oh, uh, this is just paraphrasing. There's no reason to be fearful when I'm present. <clears throat> what Jesus saying? I'm here, present. Life is frightening. You can be brave because I am with you. bring a peace that continues and endures no matter what may happen in this life and do not allow yourself to be troubled because of me you need never be afraid we know this stuff so leaving here today do not fear anything <laughs> Jack the thing that I think Christians have that separates us world and it's what Jesus is telling us is we don't have to fear this life because there's another one it's a better one and it's promised to us and so if you can teach yourself that and then you can deal with whatever happens to you in this world to say just just passing through the song about that right <laughs> just a passing through this world is not my home just a passing through where are my treasures laid up way beyond you yeah Good, good song there. So, <coughs> any questions? <laughs>
No questions? Went long today. Sorry, preacher. He just went long. Preach on. This next week, I encourage you to keep on your mind. Who can I introduce to the Lord this week? And don't be fearful of that. Because if they reject you, it ain't you. It ain't you that reject. Okay? All right. Thank have you. a great week, guys. <laughs>